Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Bede. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. What are we going to talk about today, Bede? What we're going to talk about is um, this whole question of when we say, what does it mean to be myself? Mm -hmm. um, which is a very central question in Vedanta. We're going to we're going to kind of go into the meaning of that. What does it mean to be myself and what is necessary to come to appreciate myself as myself? Yeah, good. Okay. That's what we're going to talk about. But the first thing I want to uh, talk about, first of all, is what we call the mind sense body complex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, have you noticed that in life, what is continually happening is that we're always having thoughts and emotional reactions. Have you noticed that? Yeah, that's frequent. That's, they just come along. Now, there's a difference between just having thoughts and reactions that you're aware of, right? Yeah. And literally becoming those thoughts and reactions. Yes, I think there is a difference. There's a difference, big difference. Like, for example, when I say to you, what is your name, what automatically happens? I just respond, Kevin. The thought Kevin comes into your mind, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a thought. Yeah. In fact, my very question just automatically triggers it. Whether you like it or not, the thought just automatically arises, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's not a problem because you're aware of it and it's quite useful. Someone says, well, what's your name? You said, my name's Kevin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've got this past memory that's embedded in you. Yeah. You know what I mean? This content mm -hmm. that's been formed by past experience, your parents calling you Kevin, mm -hmm. right? And when someone asks what your name is, this content becomes active as a thought in your mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now, have you ever got suddenly very annoyed with someone? I have. <laughs> now, that's different than just simply an automatic arising of the, the thought. When you are when you are being annoyed, being the annoyance, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What happens is is that you've become the reaction. Your being and the reaction are one and the same. Is that where I, I, I don't have idea? I'm not just thinking of I'm angry, I'm, I'm being angry. Yeah, there's no conscious awareness of, of the reaction as a reaction of mm -hmm. say, you can't help, you might have a reaction, a psychological reaction of annoyance, but you're aware of it. You haven't become it. Yeah, yeah. But when you're being annoyed, mm. what happens is is what Swami Dayananda says, there's now a confusion centred on self. Mm. Now, I want to just go into what that means exactly. Yeah. A confusion centred on myself. Mm. Now, the word Latin, confuse, means con, means together. Yeah. And fuse means poured together. Mm, mm. So what happens is when you are being annoyed, you are confused. <laughs> you, are, you are poured together with a psychological reaction mm. and that arises as an I feeling. I am annoyed. Okay. Can you take your glasses off, Bert? They're just distracting. Uh, okay. Hiding. So, yeah. I am annoyed. Yeah. Okay. Every little piece of me is annoyed. <laughs> my tone of voice, my body posture, the thoughts I'm having about this person, the emotion. Every part of me is involved in this being, this reaction of annoyance. And, and is, is this where the distinguishing factor is that? That's what I'm experiencing. I don't think I'm having thoughts of being annoyed. I'm, I'm experiencing being annoyed. Yeah. 
there's a big difference between someone might do something, you're aware of what they've done, yeah. you're also aware of your reaction of annoyance, mm. but you have not become confused with it. You are aware in the presence of it. Okay, yeah. Now, Swami Dayananda doesn't consider annoying reaction a problem. Mm. The problem is, the problem is, is the con self, the confusion centered on self. I've now become this reaction, this emotional reaction. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Now, not only, not only. Um, uh, so we can become thoughts and reactions, can't we? Yes. Now, in fact, most of our life as a, uh, as a, as a, our, our life as we take it to be is a constant changing of different kinds of emotional reactions that we become. All forms of unhappiness. Mm. I'm confused, I'm angry, I'm agitated, I'm restless, I'm empty, I'm bored. All of these different chopping and changing states of mind and body, does that make sense? Because they're states of mind and body. Everything conforms to that way of being. Yes, but the, the states of mind and body, we become them. Mm -hmm. And they're quite different. There's no sameness. I'm confused one moment, I'm angry the next moment, I'm bored the next moment. Mm. Okay? So what happens is this mind sense, that this, the mind, in the terms of thoughts and reactions, we become. We look at the, we look at the day and we go, oh, God, today sucks. Mm. <laughs> What Swami Dayananda says is, so here we have, we, here what happens is he says, we become the thoughts and the thoughts become us. That's how he puts it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's say, for example, you meet someone that you don't like. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know how when I said to you, um, what's your name? S suddenly the w automatically what comes into operation is the, is the name Kevin, isn't it? Yeah. So when I look at someone I don't like, I become a disliker. Mm. So I'm actually I'm actually seeing maybe maybe I'm having a thought about the person that they're an idiot. Yeah. But I'm not aware of the thought I'm having. I'm having an experience of someone as an idiot, mm. Mm. or as a wonderful person, or as whatever. And you've got no no doubt of that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not actually being alive to what is. What happens is the thought becomes projected as experience. Mm, mm. Okay, it's automatic. Yeah. I become the thoughts. Mm. And when I become any thought, I'm enclosed in that thought. I am that thought and that thought is me. The self-confusion. Mm, mm. Okay? That's a, it's amazing that... In that experience, I've got. I don't have any doubt. I just take it completely for. I think I'm being objective. You think that you're being alive to facts. Yes, that you're seeing what is. Mm. Okay, mm. Yeah. that's true. When in fact, there's actually no awareness. Actually, mm. okay. There's an awareness of an experience. Yeah. But the experience is not real. Mm. Okay, it's a product of my notions. <laughs> okay. Yes. So that's when we talk about the mind. Okay, and, and we, the mind is also extremely useful. We're not so we're talking about becoming psychological reactions. We need the mind because what happens is is that, for example, never in Vedanta are we trying, for example, uh, not to have dislikes or or, or likes. Mm. We, you know, you might like it when you're warmer, so you put on it. You put on your jacket. Yeah. Some people you have experience that some people do things that are unpleasant and they might do things that, a lot that are unpleasant. The fact that you find it unpleasant will mean, mm, I think I want to move away from this situation. So liking and disliking per se are, are not the problem. Mm. Becoming a disliker is a problem. Mm. Mm. Because as soon as I become a disliker, 
there is a confusion centered on me. I'm confused. I'm now together with this, this, this disliking in me have become one and the same. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's actually our normal condition according to Swami Dayananda. Yes. <laughs> because what happens is, you know how when I said to you, what is your name? Mm. It triggered an automatic response, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, life and circumstances are triggering us all. They're triggering our psychological reactions and we're becoming the psychological reactions. Mm. But I want to be clear that we don't just have a psychological reaction. It is an entire psychophysical reaction, a mental physical reaction. Mm. When you're angry, your whole body is involved in it. You are being the anger. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Now, so we can see, can't we, that a sense of identity arises from our thoughts and our, and our, our emotional reactions. Is that true? It appears to be that way. <laughs> and we're constantly chopping and changing. That's a common experience. Common experience. When you win lotto, you feel a lot different than when you lose $10,000 in the stock market. That's right. Okay. Now, that's so when we say mind, mm -hmm. okay, that's the mind part. Mind, sense, body, complex. What a complex means is an arrangement of parts. Mm. But this mind, sense, body, body complex is 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 dynamic in other words it's an energy taking different forms the, mm -hmm. you know emotion taking different forms the motion of thinking the motion of emotion you know what i mean like whatever it's always taking particular forms okay yeah now senses we're looking around and we you know, we can be, we can become, we can actually become a seer as opposed to be aware that I'm seeing. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So the senses are the, what happens is when we look at what constitutes our life, their whole life as a person, we've got thinking and feelings, right? Yes. Then we've got the senses, haven't we? Like our sights. I'm, I'm aware of sights. I'm aware of sounds. I'm aware of smells. I'm aware of tastes. And I'm aware of, of, of the sensory experience of my body, aren't I? Yeah. And the sensory experience of my body that consists, I'm aware of, the, say, motion, mm. physical tension. I'm aware of the weight of my body. You know, when you're tired at night, you can feel the weight of your body. Mm. Or if you're drunk, right? Yeah. Um, you, you can be aware of the, of the joint positions of your body. You know, when you, you can feel your... You know what I mean? Your, your knees are bent, or whether they're straight. Yes. Okay. And we can have, feel physical tension. Mm. So that, so that's the that's the senses. Mm. Okay. When you just coming, do you mind if I just ask about the? You can either see yourself as a seer, or or you're just. Well, I'll just go. Back, I'll go to that in a minute. Okay. So, so you've got the five senses. Yeah. Then you've got the operation of your body, haven't you? Which I was just saying then. Yeah. yeah. You feel the, you know, like right now you can feel yourself sitting there, right? Yeah. So what happens is, again, um, th this mind sense body complex is, a, is in constant movement, constant activity mm. that we can be aware of, can't we? Yeah. Yeah. You, if you stand back, you can be aware of this mind sense body complex as it's moving. Yeah. The problem is we don't often stand back and we're not aware of it. <laughs> we literally become it. Mm. So even when I'm looking, you know, I'm not really aware while I'm looking. I'm, I'm just, I've just suddenly become a seer. Mm. I've become a hearer. Mm. I've become a walker. You see, the whole thing can go along quite well without you as a conscious person. Mm. Okay? It can appear to go along well. I'm not sure well is the right word. Well, yes, but what I'm saying is that it, yeah, that's right. But the thing is that this whole, you as a mind sense body complex only can go along without you being 
without you as a conscious, aware presence of it happening. Mm -hmm. When you're angry, do you think things? So say it again. What? When you're angry, do you think things? Um, you have thoughts. Yes. Yeah, and do you have feelings? And do you say and do things? Yes. But you're not aware of it while it's happening, are you? No, it, it all conforms to the anger. It's just all coming out. It doesn't get any sanction. You're being... You're, you're being the anger. Mm -hmm. And being the anger involves thinking. Mm. It involves feeling. It involves the senses. Mm. And it involves doing stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. The diff the, the, but it goes along without you being present as, mm. a, as a conscious person. Is that is another example? It's like I can drive from point A to point B and somehow I didn't have any accidents, but I'm surprised when I get to point B. <laughs> yes, because what happens is you become imagination, daydreaming while you're driving. Mm. You see, before we hit Vedanta, we take, we take our lives and ourselves to be this mind-sense-body complex. This is the point that I want to talk about. Yeah. We take ourselves to be it. We mm. say, you know, I'm angry, I'm sad. We say, I'm cold. I'm cold. Oh, God, I'm cold. <laughs> so I'm being this person who is cold. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm being this person who's walking. Mm. I'm being this person who's thinking. So what happens is when we end the... Swami Dayananda says a very interesting thing. He says that the whole purpose of Vedanta is to come to a recognition that we're more than the mind-sense-body complex. Mm. But the fact of the matter is our sense of identity is, is centred on this mind-sense-body complex. Mm. You see, what happens is that every moment of the day, there is an eye sense. Is that true? Uh, eye feeling. Yeah, yeah. So right now you have an eye feeling. Mm -hmm. It might be a listening eye feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. It might be an annoyed eye feeling, a bored eye feeling. Mm -hmm. And this eye feeling is constantly shifting and changing. Is that true? Yeah. There is no sameness. Mm. It chops and changes. And Swami Dayananda says this is like being a somnambulist, like a sleepwalker. <laughs> there's, there's actually no, there's no awareness or appreciation of yourself as a conscious person. Mm. It's just simply this experience of yourself as a mind, sense, body complex. Mm. And you can have as many spiritual ideas about yourself, including those thoughts. Yes, I'm a spiritual being and I'm this and that and I'm consciousness. They're all just thoughts. Mm. Okay? So we have this confusion centered on self. Mm. And this is literally we have become, we are this functioning mind, sense, body complex. Mm. And, you, and you're, yep. you're, you're, you're saying that most of the time this is how we're leading our lives or, yeah. or our lives is mostly this conf this confused experience of being being our thoughts and feelings and we are being this confusion and our whole life is a dramatization of this confusion centered on self and, and but we don't even say and we and we think that we're objective when we're in that or we don't have a doubt about what we're experiencing no we think we think this is our life mm. Mm. well what's very important is you can see the chopping and changing nature of it can't you there's no sameness mm. like have you ever noticed that you are when you're doing the dishes but you're thinking of something else you're split 
you as a knower and you as a doer are split. Mm, mm, yeah. Okay, this is a, a normal condition. Mm. We're, we're what Swami Dayananda says, we're full of ourselves. We live in our own world. Not Ishwara's world. <laughs> no, not Ishwara's world, no. We're not, we're not aware of the presence of what is. Mm, mm. We're an empty, mindless dramatization of this confusion, this false sense of identity. And the functioning of the mind sense body complex pops up as a, a self feeling. I'm cold. I'm freezing. I'm hot. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm sore. Mm. Do, do you see what I mean? I'm tired. Yeah. I'm angry. I'm annoyed. Mm. All of these different eye senses that come up mm. just pop up in succession, one after the other. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is what we say is normally our life. We take this to be our life. Mm. Now, Swami Dayananda says a very interesting thing, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again. What he says is that he says, someone asked him, Swamiji, what is the meaning of life? This is this classic uh, guru uh, student question. Mm. And you expect when someone asks you what's the meaning of life, you're expecting, you're expecting them to come out with something incredibly profound. Mm -hmm. And what uh, Swami Dayananda says, the meaning of life obviously is to live. <laughs> <laughs> but he says, but he says, what do we mean by living? He said, to be to live is to be alive to facts. Mm. To be alive to facts. Mm. In other words, to be aware. Be aware. Mm. So instead of being confused, being sad, being cold, being this, it's being aware. Mm. Different sense of identity. Mm. So when you are being a simple conscious person, mm -hmm. Your eye feeling is conscious, isn't it? Mm. And in that situation, I'm not becoming my, my thoughts. Then. It's not possible. Mm. When you're being yourself in the way that Swami Dayananda means it, mm. you are unconfused. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Now, let's just have a look at what... what what does the unconfusion depend on? What, how do we bring this about? Now, some people think you bring the, uh, the unconfusion, you unconfuse yourself by saying, I am consciousness, I am awareness. I am the self. Yeah, saying it. Yes. Now, there's a big difference between me having a thought that I am the self mm. or and me appreciating myself as being conscious. Yes, one's, one's a, an idea. <laughs> One is an idea. It's of, of no use whatsoever. Mm. But the appreciation of myself as a conscious person can, related to the whole, related to what is, mm. that is actually quite an uh, incredible thing because when I am being a conscious person related to what is, conscious of what is, mm. then what happens is, is the confusion is not there. So if right here, right now, as I am, I'm alive to facts, as Swami Dayananda says it, mm. first of all, I'm living in the full sense of the word, <laughs> but I am being free, mm. relatively speaking. By, when you say by being free, you're, you're meaning you're not being determined by your psychological reactions. Yes, I'm not enclosed in, I'm not enclosed in this confusion. Mm. Mm. There's no freedom when, I said, when we are being the mind-sense-body complex. That is slavery. 
and when, it, when it's been constantly triggered with different situations and and people or circumstances or whatever, it's just constantly being triggered. That's an interesting point that you're bringing up. Mm. What happens is I look at myself. I might see myself thinking something or doing something, and then I go, oh, and I have a reaction. Oh, I hate myself. I wish I wasn't like this. If only I could do this. I become a dissatisfied person. Mm. I'm being that. Mm. I think my problem is what I'm looking at, the thoughts and the action. But Swami Dayananda says, no, the problem I have is I am being this self-dissatisfied person. Mm. I'm being this critical person. Mm. So when I look at myself, there's a reaction. Oh, I'm such a loser. So now I'm being a loser. <laughs> but when I look, at, I look at other people, they trigger me too. Yeah. How dare they do that? Mm. They're mean. Mm. I can't stand them. I hate them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or circumstances. Oh, God, it's too hard. I can't stand being in this situation. Mm. So there's this constant, you see, what I'm saying is that the confusion isn't static. It's not like I've got a fixed, erroneous conclusion about myself. You see, some people sometimes think I've got a wrong notion of myself. Mm. It's not just that. It's not what it is, is that we are living out, we are dramatizing, not living out, we're dramatizing this confusion centered on ourselves. Mm. Mm. Every single instant of the day. This is what the teaching tells us. Mm. This is why we need Vedanta. Mm. We have a confusion centered on ourself. Mm. Vedanta is a means to bring us to a recognition and an appreciation of ourselves in which that confusion does not exist. That's the whole purpose of Vedanta. Yes. Yeah. But you're not going to value Vedanta unless you see Yes, the problem that's unfolded by Swami Dayananda is my problem. This is what I am involved with. Mm -hmm. You see, if I think that I haven't got the, the disease, I'm not going to desire strongly the cure. No, not even a little bit. Won't even bother. I w and you see, then I won't, I won't seek knowledge. The seeking knowledge is seeking to see what I really am and then and to abide in the appreciation of that while living. Mm -hmm. This is what we mean by seeking knowledge, not some in the future one day I'm going to get moksha. Mm -hmm. Moksha is an appreciation of myself right here, right now, as I am, in which there is no self-confusion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, I want to read something. Oh, no, no, I just want to cover something first. Now, now, what I want to bring up, so what we want to do, first of all, is we want to be able to have an appreciation of ourselves in relative form, mm. to come to a recognition and appreciation of ourselves, first of all, as a conscious person. Mm. Now, can I do that myself? Can I go, yes, I'm going to now try and be conscious? It doesn't seem to work that way. No. It doesn't come from, you see, when I'm caught in myself in this confusion, I can't get out of the confusion from the confusion. No. But there seems to be some, some schools of thought that seem to think you can. Well, yes, there's, there's a lot, a lot. Even some Vedanta people think that. They think they can get out of it by telling themselves that they are um, consciousness. Mm. Now, this is where the understanding of Ishvara comes in. Yep. What delivers us out of this self-confusion, relatively speaking, mm. to come to a recognition and an appreciation of ourselves as a conscious person, I'm not talking about ourselves as consciousness. I don't deal with that. I'm talking about the yoga of objectivity. Mm -hmm. So what brings us out of the subjectivity is the presence of reality appreciated. Mm. Mm -hmm. I just want to go, this is extremely important. Yeah. You see, 
I used to have the idea that the world was, was something that either took from me things that I wanted or gave me things that I wanted. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I had a rather, on the whole, a rather bitter viewpoint about the world, mm. about reality. Yeah. Okay, now. But Swami Dayananda unfolds a vision of reality which, which is that the very presence of what is here is the presence of reality, is the presence of God. Mm, mm. Now, it's a very interesting thing, isn't it? The moment I pause, just simply do, just, just do this now. The moment we pause and we just appreciate the presence of reality that's here, for example, just, just, just do this for, for, for anyone who's listening, do it too. Just pause and appreciate the presence of reality in the form of the air, the light, the sounds, the sights, okay? Just do this for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Do you notice, Kevin, you find yourself being alive to facts, don't you? Yes. Yes, I find, and I find that my, I, I've become quiet. Yes. You become quietly aware. Mm. You, you become conscious. Mm. But that depends upon you being filled up with the presence of reality. Mm. Now, you're always filled up with the presence of reality, actually, but... In the appreciation of the presence of reality, it's as though the presence of reality comes into your mind, takes up all the room, and then because it takes up all the room, it lifts you out of the self-confusion. Mm -hmm. And you appreciate yourself as a conscious person. Mm. And in that practice, you initially you have to suspend all your judgments and no, 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 no. Yeah, you pause, but I don't, I don't want to go. Yeah. I just want to just go to the structure of this. Mm. What causes, what brings about yourself as a conscious person is your being related to the presence of reality through appreciation of its presence. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in other words, without the appreciation of the presence of God, we are not a conscious person. That's true. I think that's true. Okay. We can see this quite practically. Mm. Because if we're not full of the presence of God, we're full of ourself. <laughs> <laughs> what we take to be ourselves. Yes. But Swami Dayananda says, full of yourself, in the sense of it's to stress the fact that you're just full of yourself. Mm. You're living in your own world. Yes. Now, living in your own world, you cannot help but be lonely and suffer. It's just, if I go into a cold room and mm. I'm shivering, right? Yeah. What is the solution? Put a jacket on or turn Or get out of the room, right? Yeah. Now... Western psychology is a bit like that. Here's a person in the coldness of being cut off from God. Mm. And naturally speaking, if you, if you are cut off, you are going to be unhappy. You're going to have different forms of unhappiness. Mm. And in Western psychology, the problem is considered the activity of the mind-sense-body complex in that condition. Mm. So, oh, well, we've got to do something about the mechanisms and what works there and... and, and analyze it and fix it up and work it out. Mm. Do a psychological intervention, as they say. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Swami Dayananda is a lot different. Mm. As soon as you come into a relationship with the presence of God, all of that experience of yourself as a suffering person disappears. Mm. That's why he says this wonderful thing. He says psychology uh, uh, psychology hasn't got the solution, but Vedanta doesn't have the problem. Mm. Because we don't see the problem as given the person, uh, or we are cut off from God, we're caught up in ourselves, mm. we can't help but suffer. Mm. It's just a lawful expression of that being cut off. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, so we notice that 
the very first step into Vedanta is to become a conscious person. Now, I want to make be very clear. A conscious person is an adjective, isn't it? What kind of person? A conscious person. Mm. Now, there's one other step, being consciousness itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't bypass this first step. If I bypass this, it, this first step, I will be spiritually deluded. Mm. I will have all sorts of ideas about myself as mm. consciousness and whatever, but I don't know what it means to appreciate myself simply as myself as a conscious person. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Now, I want to read something by Swami Dayananda. Mm -hmm. Which book is this from? This is an action reaction, magnificent book. Mm -hmm. When I first read it, I thought it was a little bit simplistic. <laughs> That's when I suffered from being an intellectual when I first come here. Um, how do you dismiss reactions? Okay, he says, and he means being the reaction, okay? You must first discern that reactions stem from a person role confusion. So you have to resolve the confusion by being familiar with yourself, the self, the purusha, who can only be appreciative, okay? Mm -hmm. The self the uncommitted, non-responding, bare, naked self that does not brand things as good or bad is yourself. Did you notice that when you pause and you're just simply abiding in the appreciation of the presence of Ishvara and whatever form is here, sounds and sights and whatever, mm -hmm. you just simply find yourself being yourself, don't you? Mm. Being at home with myself. Being at home with yourself, just being yourself, conscious. Not needing anything to be different. No. Mm. It will not depending on things to be different in order to be yourself. Yeah. Situations require things to be done. Now, mm. now, he says, so I have to play roles and everyone, including the Swami, has to play roles. Now, he says, now this is very profound. I better become familiar with myself as a person free from roles. That is meditation. Now I'll say that again. <laughs> I better become familiar with myself as a person free from roles. That is meditation. Hmm. Now, I want to bring up a point here. Do you notice that to become aware of the presence of Ishvara is to become aware of the presence of yourself? Have you noticed that? Yeah. It's simultaneous. Mm. So when I'm being myself and composed in myself in the lap of Ishvara, I'm aware of Ishvara. When I'm aware of Ishvara, I'm aware of myself as relaxed and composed. Yeah. They're not two different things. Mm. Be aware of Ishvara is to be aware of myself. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is a very important thing. To, but the, but the, the, the basis of my, my being aware of myself is the reality of God. It's not my reality. Mm. We don't start with my reality. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Now, he says, meditation is an appointment with myself. Now, he doesn't mean myself as an angry person, myself as a confused person. He's talking about myself that is not confused. Mm. Okay? Yeah. And he says, and this is a beautiful thing. This is what uh, my wife and I do every morning. Bring the mind to yourself and then do not think of anything else. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Now, if you... You're sitting here right now, aren't you, Kevin? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, just simply for 15 seconds, and the people who are listening can do this too, just simply bring your mind to this self, this eye feeling of being conscious, a conscious person, 
Just bring your mind to yourself and think of no other thing for, for about 30 seconds, okay? Go. Mm -hmm. Now notice that when you do this, you're not only aware of yourself, you're aware of everything else that's here, aren't you? Mm. It's not like you, you're aware of this isolated entity. Mm -hmm. To be aware of yourself is to be aware of what's here. Isn't that interesting? Mm. To be aware of yourself is to be aware of Ishvara. To be aware of Ishvara is to be aware of yourself. Mm. Okay, now, in fact, Swami Dayananda says in this book, an appointment with yourself is the same as an appointment with the Lord. <laughs> okay? Yes. Now, he says here, he said here, I would say meditation is an appointment with yourself. Nothing else. You may say it's an appointment with Lord, which amounts to the appointment with yourself only. Mm. Okay? Yeah. If it is an appointment with yourself, you have to be free of roles. You know, like the, the, your role as a thinker, as a feeler, as a sensor, and as a doer. Mm. Okay? Mm. And these role, the, every role you do with, they're all roles. Okay? And you, do, you exercise those powers when you're with uh, your role as a father, mother, friend, whatever. Okay? Yeah. Now, you must be A, the person, okay? So he's got like the alphabet, A. Mm -hmm. Not the role B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. Now get this. Normally, I do not come across A. Now get this. <laughs> normally, in other words, normally I don't come across myself as a conscious person related to what is. Mm being alive to facts by being myself. Mm. Normally, that does not happen. Yeah. I always see myself as B, C, and D. Mm. Myself as thinker, myself as feeler, myself as sensor. Mm. Mm. Okay, the I sense is not centered on being a simple conscious person, is it? No. Okay. Therefore, meditation is just in keeping with the teaching. I should know what A is, what the person, the self is. Secondly, just be aware of A. An appointment with myself is shedding the roles. Now, isn't that interesting? Mm. Now, when you bring your mind to yourself, do you notice that you're just simply being this conscious person? Mm. You're aware of, are you aware of thoughts happening? Yes. Mm. Are you aware of feelings happening? Yes. Mm. Are you aware of the operation of the senses, sight, sounds? Yes. Mm. Are you aware of the fact that you're sitting down? Yes. Mm. Right? Yeah. But you are not any of those things. Your mm. eye sense do doesn't come from those things, does it? No. Your eye sense is with yourself. Mm. Isn't this most magnificent? Okay. Now. Just be yourself. Now get this. Just be yourself. Mm. Shedding all the roles, and that is meditation, which is the supreme action. <laughs> now it's not an action as such, but mm. not a doing. Mm. Meaning, absence of action. Mm. You give up all actions to be aware of yourself as a person. Mm. Now, when he says give up all actions, you're no longer a sitter. Mm. You're being yourself while sitting, aren't you? Mm. Mm. Okay? There's a distance between you and the sitting, the action of sitting. Okay? Mm. Now, 
He goes. Reactions have no status of their own. There are no vasanas or anything. There are just memories. Nothing more than that. You've got some desires, etc. Let them be there. Mm. If there is a subconscious or unconscious, let it be there. Mm. You don't mind them. You are just the simple person who is free, intrinsically free. That means that being what you are is to be free. To be yourself is to be free. Mm. From any, you are intrinsically free from any affliction. Now get this. Awareness of yourself in every situation. Now get this. Mm. Awareness of yourself in every situation knocks off the piled up reactions which make a personality. Mm. You see, normally we're a personality, not a conscious person. And, and the personality is the built-in reactions. Mm. All the all the built-in psychological reactions and senses of identity, who we think we are, these built-in reactions. It's not like we're having a thought about ourselves. Mm. There's, there's conceptions of ourselves that are built in, mm. and these perceptions get triggered moment by moment in a mindless dramatization. Yep. So is that, is that where a lot of that idea of the personality that we may think we are is to do with being a good look? Yeah. You see, personality, persona means a mask. Mm. So it's, it's, it's what we take ourselves to be. We imagine, we imagine ourselves as a wonderful human being better than others. Mm. Or mm. we imagine ourselves as a low life who's, not, who's pathetic. Mm. Both are delusional. Mm. Because, you see, that you as a conscious person is not describable, not conceivable. It's not a thought. You can't make it into an object. Mm. And it's not perceptible. Mm. It's non-dimensional. It's when you're being a conscious person and appreciating yourself as distinct from the mind, sense, body complex, mm. you have complete evidence that you're more than just this mind, sense, body complex. Mm-hmm. And this isn't brought about by saying, well, I'm not my body, I'm not my mind. Yep, oh, good. whoop did he do de dum We're talking about an appreciation, a recognition of a, an appreciation of ourselves as distinct from the mind-sense-body complex. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. This is the, the basis of Adanta. But I'm not, I'm not going to become aware of myself as a conscious person. See, the sequence of Adanta is completely in the darkness of ignorance, Mm. then becoming a conscious person, so that's relative freedom, Mm. and then a recognition and appreciation of myself as consciousness itself. Mm. And frankly, I don't know much about that. Mm. But but the thing is, what's important, Swami Dayananda says, you can't go from being a mindless mindless dramatization of personality, of your built-in reactions, Mm. and jump to the self to Mm. being consciousness itself. You first of all have to know what it means to be a conscious person while living. That's, as we're going to go into next time, is what we all mean by karma yoga. Mm. Mm. Now, get this. This awareness of yourself in every situation knocks off the piled up reactions which make a personality. He talks about the personalities, the built-in reactions. Mm. Now, when they're simply reactions, right, mm. they're not a problem. But we are them. We become this personality. As far as we're concerned, this is what we are. Mm-hmm. You are just a person. A person is always just a person who has appointments to keep, roles and scripts to follow. That is very simple. That is action. A personality is created by reactions where a person always acts. In other words, only when I am being myself can I act. Mm. The basis of responsiveness is being myself as a conscious person while living. Mm. 
Okay? Yeah. So what we have been talking about this morning is what it requires, the resolution, the resolution of this confusion centered on self. Mm. Now, because the conf because my experience of myself is unreal, it doesn't have a reality. What frees me from this confusion is my appreciation of the presence of reality. Mm. You know how Swami Dayananda says that, um, he says, uh, um, the way to invite Ishvara in your, into your life is to be aware of him. Yeah. To be aware of Ishvara is to be aware of yourself. As soon as you notice that, as soon as you actually look at any object, go quiet and just simply appreciate the presence of that object, you become conscious. Mm. Because that's what makes you conscious, mm. being related to Ishvara. Mm. Now, I strongly suggest um, uh, people do this meditation. Mm. In other words, you know, when, the, when you get up in the morning, get it, get whatever, after you've cleaned up and everything, just sit down and just simply bring your mind to yourself and think of no other thing. Just simply do that. Mm. And become familiar with yourself as a conscious person. Mm. Because it's only then that the more familiar with, you, with yourself as that, the more um, you can live as that. Does that you can live your life as this, as mm. this conscious person. Mm. Because as we know, and as we've gone on, the practice of karma yoga actually is being yourself, relaxed in the lap of Ishvara, performing action. Mm. which is what we're going to go into next time. But all I wanted to point out today is this. Our whole problem is a confusion centered on ourself. Mm. But we cannot approach this confusion without an understanding of what Ishvara is, mm. what God is. Mm. Because the appreciation, the presence of God is the appreciation of ourselves as conscious. Mm. The appreciation of ourselves as conscious is the appreciation of the presence of God. They're not two different things. Mm. Okay? Yep. All right, Kevin. All right. Thanks very much, Bye-bye.